Welcome to the Tips for Staying Engaged series brought to you by occupational therapists within UCD, TCD and TUD. This video is going to focus on setting up your environment at home for effective study, sitting an exam and keeping your work and relaxation spaces separate. We will be focusing on three main areas of our environment. Firstly, our physical environment, including the auditory and visual environment, for example, our workspace, noise, light and clutter. The virtual environment for managing distractions such as email, news and social media outlets. And the social environment for managing interactions with our family, housemates, friends, lecturers and so on. The most important piece of advice from this video is that you should try to keep the environments in which you study, relax and sleep all separate. We associate certain activities with certain environments, for example, the library with studying and bed with sleeping. Hence, studying in our bed is not helpful for studying and it also impacts how well we will be able to sleep later on that day. Think about how you best learn and what things you find distracting. Ask yourself, are you easily distracted by noise? Do you need to move around while you learn? Are you easily distracted by visual distractions? What items or tools do you need in order to study effectively? For example, your laptop, notepad, pens or highlighters. Reflecting on what works for your study and trying to replicate this in your home environment can be helpful. When considering the basics of our physical environment, try to pick an area at home in which there is a table or desk and a chair. If you are living in rented accommodation or cannot find a suitable space in your home, try to create a separate workspace within your room which is not your bed. This creates a boundary between study and rest. Also consider the tidiness of your workspace. Is it cluttered with papers, books or items not related to study such as crockery, makeup, clothes or other items? Take five to 10 minutes each day after you finish your work to tidy your space to ensure it stays clutter free. Ergonomics is all about making sure your work environment is conducive for efficient study as well as being a safe and comfortable place for you to work. We can make tweaks in our workplace environment as to not cause any unnecessary strain on our neck, back, joints and eyes. Please see the following link for an example of how to set up a suitable home office. One element we must consider is the visual environment. Some tips include ensuring our study environment has sufficient light to reduce eye strain, clearing your desk to only essential items such as paper, pens, water and a calculator, as if you were sitting an exam. If you find visual distractions difficult to manage, try to position yourself away from a window or areas in the house where people are moving around, for example, the kitchen. Or try to face your desk to a blank wall. We appreciate that the levels of noise at home are not anywhere near as controlled as that in a library due to other family members having to work from home or other housemates going about their day. A few tips include trying to use headphones, earphones, or earplugs to try block out noise, particularly at busy times during the day. If you find it helpful, listening to instrumental music or white noise or nature sounds can be helpful to block out background noise. Try Spotify's Music for Concentration playlist, YouTube's Relax Daily channel, or try out apps like Relaxio or A Soft Murmur. We are aware that most of your classes are now going to be held virtually over Blackboard or Brightspace depending on the university you are in. However, it can be difficult to manage distractions within our virtual environment, such as Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or Snapchat. To help manage this, consider only checking email and news outlets at designated times during the day. Try a media or app blocker, such as Cold Turkey or Freedom, which allow you to block certain apps and websites for certain periods of time. We really can't depend on our own willpower not to check Instagram all of the time. Check your university's guide on how to access lectures via Brightspace or Blackboard. Many people don't actually study well sitting in one place for a long period of time. Incorporating movement into your study routine can be helpful. For example, try sitting on a gym ball, giving yourself enough space to move around, using a fidget toy while studying such as a stress ball, slinky or fidget spinner, 
or try walking around while reciting facts or expressing ideas. As the saying goes, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Try to organise everything you need for a study session before you sit down, such as gathering relevant notes and tools for a study session, having a glass of water on your desk, or setting reminders of lecture times throughout the day if your classes are being held in real time. When tidying your workspace each day, also consider what you need to do the following day and organise anything you need to achieve this. We appreciate that some of you may be working alongside your whole family or housemates and others who may be working alone during this time. We also appreciate the social aspect of college is very important for your learning. Some strategies include speaking with your family or housemates and agreeing on some rules and quiet times to not be disturbed and to help with your study, as well as making them aware of important times such as online exams. Organise to do something fun as a household later in the day, such as watching a movie, playing a board game, board game or cooking a nice dinner. Trying to set up group chats or Skype study sessions with some classmates can be helpful to keep you connected while you're learning. You may also wish to set up a Google Drive to share resources with each other. Also organise to connect with friends and classmates informally as well such as playing games online or using a video chat app which allows you to play games such as House Party. Some of you may be concerned about sitting exams at home and this concern is very understandable. Here are some strategies which can help. Trial the previous strategies on managing auditory and visual distractions to find out what works best for you. Set up your exam space well in advance of an exam starting and if possible, practice an exam in this setting. Ensure your family or housemates are aware of your exam schedule in advance so that they can reduce distractions during this time. It may be helpful to put a reminder on the door where you are sitting your exam as well. Incorporating movement breaks into your exam time to help regulate your sensory environment such as wall planks, push-ups and jumping jacks can be helpful. Do something to de-stress before your exam, such as meditation, exercise or deep breathing, and organise to do something rewarding afterwards, such as calling a friend or doing a hobby. Going back on what we discussed regarding the physical, visual, auditory and virtual and social environments, your space to relax area is going to be affected by each of these environments, how you choose to set them up based on your preferences and what is available to you in the house. The easiest way to set up a space in your home to ensure it can provide you with a sense of calm and relaxation is by thinking about a space where you would normally go to get away from all of the busyness of life or a place when you feel instantly at ease. We call this the relaxation station. How is the space normally physically set up with furniture, props, comfy cushions, etc? And can you bring some or all elements of this to a room within your own home? When you are relaxing, are you doing a certain activity, for example, yoga, meditation, reading, and is there a space, a comfy chair or a bed to engage in this within your chosen room? As mentioned previously, it is important to separate your study and exam environment from your relaxation environment, but we can appreciate this is not always possible when renting accommodation or in a busy household. Try to keep your reading, meditation and yoga away from your desk and if possible, close off an area in your room specifically for relaxation. Going back to your relaxation station, think about the following. How does this place become lit? Is there soft lighting, lamps or fairy lights perhaps? Do you associate candles with the relaxing space? What kind of colours are you surrounded by and does the room look busy or clear of any items which may bring about stress? The general advice we give to students when visually setting up a room for relaxation would be to keep bright lights away and include colours which you might find soothing, such as green or blue. Keep books, desks and any items you can associate with productivity out of sight and out of mind. The same way your phone might distract you from study, your books or laptop might distract you from real relaxation. Although our advice to you would be to study and relax in separate environments, our advice in relation to the auditory elements of both of these environments are quite similar. The use of headphones can often give you a feeling of control with the noise levels of family members or housemates going about their everyday around you. 
Headphones, earbuds or earphones can really help with relaxation, allowing you to focus on your own thoughts if meditating or your movement if completing a yoga class. As mentioned earlier, listening to music can often help when creating a relaxation environment. Going back to using Spotify and YouTube, except maybe straying away from study-focused music, such as music for relaxation, music for reading, and music for sleeping when you're finally ready to hit the hay after a very long day. Relaxation is generally something we best engage in alone, often because it does not require discussion, an opinion or emotional expression. Whilst we can really enjoy the company of others throughout the day, relaxation time provides us with the opportunity to take ourselves away from the busyness of everyday life. We also appreciate being around others all day long can sometimes be just as exhausting. This also extends to the virtual community, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter and TikTok, or any social media platform you may use. Whilst a person within these communities may not be physically present, Thoughts, comments and continuous discussion via messenger can be very distracting and take away from relaxation, being a time purely for your own self. If you are someone who finds relaxation particularly difficult, it might be a good idea to trial various relaxation activities with another person whom you enjoy their company. This might help ease you into a routine of relaxation until you can find a strategy that best works for you. For more information, please see your university's relevant website. For now, stay safe and look after yourself.